Hello, everybody. My name is meteorologist Hutch Johnson. A low pressure system is going to work its way off of the Pacific coast and onto the West coast as we go into the weekend. And through the weekend, it's going to intensify. It's going to be bringing bands of moderate and heavy snow, wind, all important clouds for the viewing of the eclipse, and a risk for some severe weather to the central and southern plains on the big eclipse day itself. We're going to go through the forecast. We're going to track the system. We're also going to take a check at the risk of severe weather and where it is as we go through the event on Monday. Why don't we start with that severe weather risk, shall we? Here's a look at my friends at the Storm Prediction Center. And again, this is for Monday. There's a risk of severe weather right here along the path of totality. We'll remind you where that is, but it gets started in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas midday. And as we go toward the early afternoon hours, it will be crossing through Arkansas and the Boot Hill of Missouri. A risk of severe weather in these areas already highlighted by the Storm Prediction Center. I'll show you more on the path and the trajectory of storms as well, but you can bet with storms, we're also going to anticipate that risk of some cloud cover with the system as well, which would definitely impact your viewing of the system. Now, let's take a look at what we have going on with regard to the forecast model. While I load that up, I do want to highlight forecast models going out beyond days three or four do have some trouble sometimes with their accuracy and consistency. So there can be some changes to this. But as we head into the weekend and you get prepared to make some travel for the big event, if you are traveling to see and get into an area where the best chance at seeing the total solar eclipse is going to be. I'll highlight those details for you. So let me set up the computer here right quick and we're going to turn you back over to this for a look at the forecast model heading into next week. Here we go. Now, this storm system on the west coast is going to make its way inland, and as it does so, it will bring with it that chance of some significant wind and snow from the west coast and into the plains. So I'm going to back this up just a bit, and you can see, and I'll rock back and forth, what the situation is late week. One system bringing heavy snow to the Great Lakes and northeast will continue to dump several inches of snow in that area. We're going to track this system as well as it exits into the weekend. And then heading onto the West Coast, you can see the swirl making its way on there. That system is the one that will intensify and will impact the big solar eclipse. Let's get, check things out. As we track things through, we'll zoom you into the Northeast. Snow will be exiting as we go into your Friday. By 10 p.m., it will be moving offshore, but still impacting places like Maine with some bands of very heavy snow. Notice from Bangor to Augusta, some very heavy bands of snow continuing all the way through Friday. You can expect heavy, wet, nasty kind of shovel trouble snow you want to be careful with that. In the meanwhile, out on the West Coast, here comes a making landfall, a swirling low pressure system, and it's going to bring a chance of snow from the mountains outside of Los Angeles to the Sierra Nevada to the uh, mountains outside of Reno. And check this system out. It will spread its way through the central Rockies as the low pressure system develops. Western Montana and Idaho, all the way into western parts and eastern parts of Wyoming. This storm system will bring a chance of snow over the Rockies and into the high plains as we head into the late weekend. Check this out. Rain showers spreading as we go through the 7th late. That's some Saturday night rain showers working their way through into Sunday, heading into the 8th. Then look at the snow spreading across the Dakotas, potentially. Much of Wyoming seeing heavier bands of snow. And these clouds extend all the way through as we go into the nighttime hours of the 7th, the night before the big event. Will these clouds clear? Nah, not for many of us. And notice this skinny trail here along the cold front. That'll be a chance for some narrow showers and the focal point for some potential strong to severe storms as we head into Monday. Here's Monday's timeline. Look at the snow spreading through the northern plains and boom, firing potentially strong to severe storms in Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas right along the path of the eclipse and that is on the 8th and 9th heading into the time frame. Now, you notice that the clouds are stretching all the way through and into the northern plains. So we'll take a moment here now. And now that we've tracked this out, I'm going to remind you of the path of totality and when and where that will be. From my friends at NASA, the dark path you see here is the areas that will be able to see 100% coverage of the sun 
in the eclipse. Now, as that happens around the midday hour in the Rio Grande Valley, we move up here and the time frame shows you when we'll see that total eclipse taking place in places like Arkansas as we go through about 1.45 to 2 in the afternoon central daylight time, and it will continue to track its way northward into the Ohio River Valley southern illinois indiana and if you're heading into indianapolis there is going to be a chance of seeing that total eclipse at around the three o'clock hour and it will continue its way northward through the northeastern united states including northernmost pennsylvania and new york vermont new hampshire and on into maine as we close out the event in the 3 30 time frame eastern daylight time. So that is a reminder of the track of totality and other places in the country will have a chance at seeing it as well. But with that storm system rolling its way through the northern plains and the narrow band of clouds potentially with that, let's take a look at the impacts of these couple of systems working their way through. I want to start with the risk of snowfall. And for that, we'll take a look at the American model. Now, again, as we set this model into motion, we just showed you this on the other computer, but I do wanna show you the timing and intensity of the snow where you see the dark blue bands is heavier snow through the Rocky Mountains, spreading into some heavy rain into the Northern Plains, uh, Nebraska, and then a narrow band along the cold front that will be developing as we head from Sunday, and here's Monday. Look at all the development of showers and storm potential as we go into the Sunday night and Monday. Now let's take a look at the cloud potential with this particular model and I will track this with you and as we get into the time frame of the eclipse you'll get a chance to see right here as we head into Monday I'm going to step through time and here you go there is the track of the eclipse the time frame on this is 10 in the morning so as we get ready to see the solar eclipse it looks like we'll have that greatest chance at seeing some cloudy skies let me get this back onto the appropriate frame here you go this is heading into the midday hour when things start and the model shows in and around the boot hill of Missouri may be a little break in the clouds. Otherwise, shower and thunderstorm development in parts of Texas could take place and limit some of the viewing there. West Texas might offer a little bit better viewing, but maybe not of the total eclipse. Notice that we have a fair amount of clouds, but in the far, far northeastern United States, there may be a chance, a break between systems, if you will, of seeing the, the eclipse with regards to cloud cover. So that's one model's rendition. You can you know, closely pay attention to this as it changes. Now let's look at the wintry weather impacts and snowfall potential of our winter weather systems. Let's start in the Northeast. As we go through, I will go ahead and zoom in to just the Northeastern United States here so you get a feel for what might be coming as we head right into your weekend. Now, the snowfall amounts here, I just want to say we have a great chance at seeing over six to eight inches of heavy wet snow in areas that you see highlighted here. We're talking about much of the state of Maine seeing very heavy wet snow over six inches, and some will have a chance at over eight inches of heavy snow. This extends into northern New Hampshire and Vermont. And look at upstate New York as well as that system makes its way through. And don't forget about the app Appalachian chains as we head into parts of southern Pennsylvania and the Virginias as well. So significant snow, and this is all on the ground by the time we get to Sunday. Now we'll change and shift our focus to the western portion of the United States. And to do that, we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of different regional sectors. Number one, the northwestern United States. This really gets going as we head into the weekend and the early part of the weekend. And this is by Sunday night. Snowfall could be quite heavy in the mountains of Montana, northern and central Wyoming, all the way down through Cheyenne as we go into the southern pass on the I-80 corridor of Wyoming. Look at Idaho. Most of Idaho having a great chance at seeing over six inches of snow with the mountain peaks seeing even potentially more than that. Now, as we shift our focus into the southwestern United States, we'll focus on the Sierra Nevada as well as southern parts of Utah. Much of this snow will happen by Saturday, and as we head into the weekend, there will be a chance for the southern Rockies of Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona seeing some snow shower activity that could exceed three to six inches in the deep south. We're talking about the desert southwest and the elevated terrain there. That is a look 
at the snow tracker and the snow potential with this system as it works its way through. We've covered the clouds, we've covered the storm track. Let's take a look at the rain shower, the thunder shower chances with regards to our strong storm potential as we head into the weekend. To do that, let's take a look at a different model. This one we'll look at, and I do want to change the potential here to look at the severe weather potential. We're going to look at our energy in the atmosphere to create storms, and we're looking in the south central United States where the risk will be greatest as we head into the day on Monday. So here we go. This is Monday. Now you can see the energy in the atmosphere where you see the reds here. Convective atmospheric potential energy tells us where the atmosphere has that energy or lift to create thunderstorms. And it's really close to the track of that total solar eclipse. So stay weather aware, but know this, there is going to be some challenges for many of you. And if you are traveling, you may want to position yourself in an area that has the best chance. And a reminder of that, well, Hutch's gut, what am I feeling? Well, as a meteorologist, I can tell you, it looks like more models are agreeing that the far northeastern United States up near Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, may have a break between systems as we go through uh, and into Monday for the event. So the northeast will stand a good chance. A couple of models are showing a break in the cloud cover here in the boot hill of Missouri. So this may not be a bad place either. Remember, the storm system weakens and stalls out, but it leaves a broad area of cloud cover through the northern place Plains, the Dakotas, Minnesota, all the way into the Ohio River Valley, the way it looks right now. That could change, but that might be quite limited as we look into the Ohio River Valley, into parts of Southern Illinois. So Boot Hill of Missouri, straight down into Texas. Texas here looking less likely to have a great chance at seeing maybe in the far Western reaches here as things just get started. A little bit better of an opportunity in the earlier part of the day before the thunderstorm chances really do start to increase. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. I've been a broadcaster for the better part of 27 years. I've taught meteorology in the college classroom for the better part of 20 years. It's a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you so much. I love to have your likes, your comments, and of course, your subscriptions. Don't forget to hit the dingle bell on there to make sure that you're notified when I am going next.